Hello, I'm Bob the Booker and welcome to my channel. Um, so today as I'm kind of continuing on through the Women's Prize shortlist for 2022, um, I have just finished reading uh, Lisa Allen Agostini's The Bread the Devil Need. Um, and this is a book that is set um, in Trinidad. It's sort of spoken, the, the whole book is sort of narrated in a sort of Trinidadian Creole um, and uh, the the whole book kind of deals a lot with Trinidadian um, sort of society, but has a lot more kind of universal themes sort of on top of that. Um, so I'm going to be talking a bit about this book today, but just sort of a, as a bit of housekeeping, I guess, before we start, um, just to quickly let you know that firstly, there will be some spoilers later in the video. I'll, I'll announce when that's about to happen. Um, but, you know, this first part should be relatively spoiler free, as in only things that happen either right at the beginning of the book or would be on the blurb um, of the book itself. Um, and I should also sort of say from the outset as well that this book deals a lot with domestic violence and a lot of um, issues around abuse. So also if you're not comfortable um, hearing sort of discussions of that, um, then, then please also feel free to click away. Um, but uh, you know, overall, I, I, I think this book is really well worth reading and I, I kind of want to go into what, you know, some of those reasons why. But I think it's so interesting to see on a shortlist like this to have a book from um, from Trinidad, partly because I don't think, you know, much of the Caribbean really often features in a lot of big book prizes, unfortunately. You know, it's sort of obviously a slightly smaller book industry than perhaps, you know, the nearby US industry. Uh, but still, you know, a lot of a really great work that often comes out. So um, really exciting to see a book like this make the list. And I just want to talk a little bit about what happens in it. So we are told the whole story from the perspective of a woman called Alethea. Um, and as we find out, her name does have some sort of symbolism as well. Her, um, it, it, it comes from um, a Greek word for truth, um, which I kind of I had this moment of sort of like, why do I feel like I know this? And then realised it was from His Dark Materials because of the lithiometer from that. Anyway, um, but uh, this character is going through some quite substantial uh, sort of difficulties in her life. She is in a relationship that is um, deeply abusive in many, many ways. Um, her partner, Leo, um, is incredibly controlling, um, both in terms of you know, her social life and sort of finances and some other things but also, you know, is physically and sort of sexually violent towards her a lot of the time. Um, but we also sort of see these moments where Alethea um, talks about um, her kind of another man that she's sort of seeing. And this is a man who treats her quite nicely, comparatively, uh, which in fairness isn't hard because <laughs> Leo is awful. Um, and there are just sort of quite a lot of things built around this woman's life. Um, and we kind of see the bind straight away that she is in. She's a woman who is um, uh, kind of dealing with various sort of knock-on effects from her family, um, which are revealed a lot more um, the further you go into the book. But from the, the beginning, we're kind of given a bit of an indication that within her own family, she is a bit of a, um, you know, she's sort of been treated not necessarily particularly well by her family. Also, there are some interesting dynamics that come in because she's quite light skinned um, compared to um, a fair number of her family. And so there's this sort of dynamic that comes up there as well, um, particularly like then her in Trinidadian society um, as someone who's, who's lighter skinned. Um, and we also see quite a lot of discussions going on just around sort of generational trauma. Um, and that starts quite quickly. But there are moments of sort of humour and, and hope in the book. But just as a sort of heads up fairly early on, this is not, I mean, if, if it wasn't already clear by some of the subject matter, this is not always an easy read. And um, there are moments where we get fairly prolonged um, and detailed descriptions of abuse in, in various ways, uh, both sort of sexual and physical. And so that can be deeply uncomfortable to read. And I think actually, um, if, if it is something that you're able to stomach and you know, that you're able to read and, and um, I, I think this book has a lot to offer because I think this book details those things so brilliantly in not really sparing any of the details, not trying to gloss over it, but instead really focuses on 
some of the absolute horrors that this woman is going through. Um, and I think plot-wise, you know, it, it sort of, there, there are a lot of flashbacks to her history, um, but largely as well, it is her taking us through her life as she sort of slowly tries to, you know, find peace and break away from an abusive relationship. Also in the meantime, finding things that give her a sense of agency. So um, running her own business potentially, or, or all these other things. So it sort of teased a lot of these details quite early on. And then it is hard to speak about a lot of the rest of that without going into spoilers. So I'll go into spoilers in just a moment, but just to say before I go into that, um, before people click off, I think this book is well worth checking out. I think it's a really strong book on this list. Um, whereas I don't think it was always perfect, and again, the perfect books ever exist, I don't know. Uh, I think, um, I, I think it's it done really, really well. I think there are occasional moments where I felt that maybe the book was a bit coincidental on some details, um, and maybe a bit kind of showing its hand, maybe quite early and sort of like, I'm going to do this thing, it's going to be a twist. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I think this is a really heartbreaking but powerful read. Um, and with that said, let's go into some spoilers. Okay, so to start off spoiler-wise, um, we learn obviously fairly early, as I mentioned, about this domestic abuse situation that she is in, this sort of violent relationship. And we get these descriptions of Leo attacking her. Um, a lot of the moments where he's attacking her are done in a really, I mean, it, it, it's very visceral as a book. It really got under my skin because you are watching somebody manipulate um, this, this, this woman and, and you're hearing the language of abusers in that sense, right? You're hearing him say, you know, kind of hit her and then say, oh, but I love you or come on, baby, you know, all these sorts of things. And it's, it's, heartbreaking and really difficult to read that kind of thing however I think that is part of this book's strength as well as is really investigating what some of that looks like and even some of the other relationships that she has around her um, both family and um, with friends or with other men um, there are still these power dynamics that exist in these relationships in some ways and still ways that harm is perpetuated and so I think that's also what's really clever about this book is its ability to to sort of say yes here is an abusive relationship in a way that you would typically expect an abusive, abusive relationship to look like potentially you know physical violence sexual violence um holding back on money those sorts of things but at the same time there are the weird dynamics with families that are sometimes quite weird and nuanced and you, you maybe wouldn't necessarily call them abuse but they are um to do with power and they are to do with um uh, this kind of imbalance as well so there's quite a lot i think in this book that details that and, and explores it really quite powerfully a really big example of that being what we learn within her family um and i know this is the spoiler section but i don't want to fully spoil this because this is like a a bit towards the like right at the end this is sort of part of the crux of the book but we do learn a significant amount about her family um and the interactions in the family and we basically learn just how generational a lot of this trauma and abuse is we know that various family members have abused other family members we learn that the sort of family tree is incredibly complicated because of various things throughout um throughout its history and so really this family has it, it, i think this book is quite clever in the way it basically says generational trauma impacts these things it makes people perhaps more likely to stay in unhealthy or unsafe situations it perhaps makes people see certain things as being loving when they're not or vice versa um but it also doesn't then excuse any of the characters it doesn't say because this happened to you it's now okay that you perpetuate harm onto others it doesn't ever say that it, it more kind of explores that nuance that this is tricky business to really dig into this is not a comfortable easy conversation but actually characters need to, for people to, to need to for people to be able to heal they need some of this they need some of this sort of acknowledgement that some of this has been going on so i think um 
I found the book really interesting in, in its portrayal of abuse and family trauma for that reason, that I think it, it, it very clearly seems to understand some of the, the mechanisms, I guess, behind that. Um, and another key part is how we then see the, what has to be the end of this relationship. We're teased quite early on in the book that um, another domestic, uh, a, a, um, an abusive relationship ended by somebody being shot. And it's heavily suggested by every character around Alethea that that is exactly how she will meet her end or how the relationship will end. Is It has to end with one of you dying almost. That's the only way out for you in this relationship, right? Um, it's compounded by the fact that her boyfriend uh, or partner, Leo, is also a fairly famous figure. The dynamics around him um, being a famous musician um, mean that there is also a kind of reverence for him and the kind of public persona of him as being this sort of national hero versus the, the you know behind closed doors version where he's abusive and manipulative is really quite stark. And so um, the only way that this relationship could end, particularly for somebody in the power dynamic that she's in of not only being um, a woman sort of trying, you know, potentially trying to articulate that a man is being violent, but also not only that, a, a woman who's not famous saying that to a man who is incredibly famous um, locally and, and, you know, well respected means that there's this bizarre, difficult dynamic to try and unpick. And so she is trapped in some ways, or at least feel, very much feels herself to be. And her only way out, we therefore realise, is something radical changing. And we probably think that has to be death, whether Alethea's at the hands of her partner um, or through some other means. And that's what the book starts to tease quite early on. We get the idea that there is this, this wider picture of violence going on, of either police killings or, um, or of kind of um, people kind of shooting each other. And so we kind of think this is possibly where it's going to be. And it all ends in this sort of en this sort of big final scene, which, you know, you do sort of see coming because it has been teased in many ways. But I suppose you never know exactly which way it's going to fall because it's because the whole book is teased that it could be her death or his. We don't know how this book's going to end. And I think um, that was kind of a really clever and interesting part of the book, I thought. Um, so, yeah, without going into you know kind of talking about this for, for way way longer i think this book is really well done um yeah maybe a bit sort of you know coincidental or a bit kind of uh predictable i guess maybe in tiny parts but i don't think that's to the books i, I don't think that's a major discredit to this book because i think actually what it does is so interesting that that's that's like a background set piece you know the coincidences the the kind of maybe predictable plot points on, on certain things. What's actually the interesting and core part of this book is this discussion of um, abuse and violence and cycles of violence and, ab of, and of abuse. And actually, I think this book does this incredibly well. And, you know, it goes into painful detail. We do have, a, like I mentioned, a prolonged scene of reading somebody being abused and several times at various stages of this woman's life. And that is deeply uncomfortable. Like, I don't think I've ever sort of been made to read that in a book in quite that way um but I think it's done very skillfully and very sensitively and ultimately I, I think this is a really brilliant and interesting book um and I really hope more people check it out but again obviously with a massive caution that this is heavy subject matter and if this is something that you is quite sort of personally troubling for you maybe best to avoid it um Anyhow, I've been Bob the Booker talking about this book. I'll speak to you all soon and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, please, if you are leaving comments, please try to avoid spoilers in the comments just for people who haven't read it yet. I've been Bob. Take care. Speak to you all soon. Bye bye.